Today, I want to talk to you about how to make a screen shareable in React. And uh, to talk about this, I've got a little demo here. It's a simple table that lets us uh, search. We can see here we're showing five of a thousand results. So this is kind of a server side rendered table. I can type in Sam and we can see the results. I can type in John and we can see the results. And right now this is built um, just in React, but I can't share this table at all. So uh, this URL right here, I've updated my search text, but if I come into a new tab and paste it, we're gonna see the default table being rendered. So I wanna talk about how to make this shareable in the URL, um, kind of a way that a lot of folks end up doing it, which is not the best, can get you into a lot of trouble, and then we'll talk about um, the right way to do it. And so uh, just to show you real quick the code right now, this is a Next app, but this is all client-side data fetching. We're using React Query right here to uh, fetch the data from this little API route handler. We get the data right here, and down here we loop over it and render the table. And for the search input right here, we can see that right here. Whenever we change, we are going to set some state. This is just React state. It lives right here. And uh, once this gets set, because search is a query key for our React query, uh, it's gonna tell React query to refire it so that we can update and fetch the new search results. We see we're using it right here. This will get re-rendered and we'll see the new user. So every time I type, we see the little loading indicator and the table updates. Uh, but like I said, we can't share this table at all. So um, how might we do that? Well, we need to use the URL. And uh, every time this search changes, we might wanna push something to the URL, something like question mark search equals Alice. So uh, this sounds like a good use case for use effect, right? If we can run an effect every time search changes, we should be able to push a new URL, and that way we can track the state of our app in the URL. So let's try this out. Um, we'll go ahead and grab use effect. And if we put search in here, then we should be able to run some code every time search changes. Now, this is a next app, so we can use the router hook to get the router. And router has a method called push, and we can just push uh, a new URL with search equals search, something like that. Let's go ahead and auto-complete the dependencies. Let's give ourselves a little bit more room over here. And uh, let's try this out. Okay, when I refresh, it looks like it adds this automatically. So let's just go ahead and say, if we have search, we'll do this. That way we don't override the default here. So let's go back to the beginning. That looks good. And now when I type in S, a and M, uh, we have our URL being pushed. So uh, this seems to be working. Um, let's go ahead and see if we copy this, open a new tab and try to share this. Well, uh, maybe it's not working quite yet. We see the URL does have our uh, search term as the text, but the table is not respecting that. And that's because our search text defaults to the empty string. So when we first render this page, uh, we actually want to check if there is a search param in the URL. And if so, we want to use that for the default value for search. And we can do that pretty easily using use search params. This is a hook from next. And uh, let's go ahead and get params dot get search. This is an instance of URL search params. And so this is how you get a specific query param off of it. Uh, if we go ahead and do this, and then we come over and refresh. Well, check that out. Now we've got uh, John here in the input. We only see John's. Uh, if I type in Sam, we see the table still works. And uh, if we close this and try it again with Sam, it looks like uh, we have this kind of two-way communication here going on. The initial render is correct, and we can update this, and it updates in the URL as well. So pretty cool, just a little use effect here that watches search and updates the URL, and we read it right here. Um, but let me show you something because we actually just added a bug to our app. I'm gonna go home, start from scratch, type in John, and now I'm gonna hit the back button. And uh, look at that. The back and forward buttons are not doing anything. And if you've been using React for some time, I'm sure you've seen this bug before. 
Um, the navigation buttons are changing the URL, but our React app is not responding. So how might we solve this? Well, we have an effect here that watches for changes to our React state, and it updates the URL whenever that happens. Maybe we need another use effect that watches for changes to our query params and updates our React state, set search, whenever those change. So we could do this, um, but I'm not even gonna go down this path because we are going down a bad road here. And the fundamental reason we have a bug right now is because we have two sources of truth for our search text. One, we have it in the URL. So if I type in John, we refresh our app. We have John in the URL. And two, we have it right here in our React state. And uh, if we change our React state, we see we're kind of synchronizing the URL, but we forgot to watch for changes to the URL and synchronize React state. But fundamentally, the problem is that we're trying to sync two pieces of state to begin with. We really have two sources of truth for our search text in this app, one inside of React and one in the browser. And duplicate sources of truth, duplicate state in an app is typically the culprit for all sorts of frustrating bugs like this. And it can be tempting to just go down this kind of path of adding more effects to try to consider all the edge cases and make sure you always synchronize everything so it's lined up, but there's usually a much, much easier way. And that is to eliminate the duplicate source of truth. So in this case, if we have the search text in the URL, which we just added because we wanna make the table shareable, but we also have it in React state, which one of those sources of truth should we eliminate? Well, usually you wanna eliminate the one if it can be derived from the other. And if you think about the URL here, if we go ahead and type in John, the URL really sits outside of our application. You can think of your app as kind of like a materialized view of the URL, right? The URL is the entry point. If I share this with a colleague or a friend, we're gonna paste this in. Um, this URL is something I own, I'm the user. And so I've already set the URL search param to be this. So that is the source of truth for um, the search query param. And it's nothing that we can do as application developers in our code to change that. That is the value when we first enter the app. So if we can just read uh, from the URL and eliminate our React state instead of deriving it from the URL, then we should eliminate the bug. And that's exactly uh, what we're gonna do to fix this. So um, let's undo what we did here. We'll undo this effect. We'll undo um, that new search params default state as well. And let's go back to just our table right here, just in React. Uh, we'll go back to the home page, type in Sam. We see it all works, but there's no URL support. So at this point, we wanna make this shareable, which means we want the search text to be hoisted up to the URL. So let's uh, do that and derive our search text in our code from it. So instead of having React state, this is what we wanna eliminate. Let's use search params and we'll let search be params.getSearch. And so uh, it looks like by default, this is going to be uh, string or null. So if we don't have anything here, let's just default this to the empty string, just like what we were doing before, that way when we refresh this, we have a good render. And now if I type, well, we're getting an error. It's saying set search is not defined. Let's come down to our input. Instead of setting state, since we've hoisted the search text up to the URL, uh, what do we want to do? Well, we don't want to set, set state. We want to actually change the URL. It's kind of like we've lifted the state up, but instead of lifting it to a parent component, we're lifting it to the browser, the URL. And so now if we change the input text, we want to change the URL. So right here, instead of calling set search, let's call router.push, and we're going to need the router for this. And this will basically be exactly the logic that was in our effect. We'll just grab this right here, and let's go ahead and let search equals that. If we have search, we'll do this. And we need to grab the router, so let's just use router like that. 
Okay, so now we have a router. If we have search, we're gonna push this. Let's go ahead and refresh, type in John. Oops, forgot her equal sign. <laughs> Let's try again. Let's go back, clear this. J-O-H-N. There we go. We have uh, John in the results. The URL's updated, the text field's updated. Let's try sharing this. Initial render looks good. And now for the moment of truth, let's try hitting the back button. Check that out. Everything is working. Let's try Sam. Copy this, paste this in. Delete, delete, back, forward. Look how easy that was. Wasn't that easier than adding another use effect and trying to think of all the ways that the URL can change such that we can account for that and keep our React state updated. Um, all we did was delete use state, replace search with use search params. And whenever we type in here, we just push a new URL. And so effectively, we've hoisted the state up to the parent and um, our app is not broken anymore. The back buttons uh, work, the forward buttons work, the refresh works. And um, anything else that were to change, the search param would also be reflected in our table. So pretty cool. Uh, one last thing, if I try to delete this all the way, you'll see the last character doesn't work. That's just because we have this logic here that says, if we have search, we'll push this. Otherwise, we're not gonna do anything. Let's just go ahead and say, uh, if there is no search, um, we'll go ahead and push the home page. So that way, when I delete this, we're all good. I can type Sam, I can hit delete, I can share this, I can use forward and back, and everything is good to go. So um, this idea of duplicate sources of truth comes up in React all the time. There's some great documentations in the React docs I'll link you. Uh, it's called, you may not need an effect. And basically I've found any time you have an effect that has some logic, it looks something like this. You know, if some condition, then set state. And there's nothing asynchronous happening there. Um, it's probably the case that you have duplicate state somewhere. Either it's duplicated between two components, two siblings, um, an ancestor and a child. Um, and there's usually a better way to handle it. And usually that way is to remove the duplication and derive the state when you can. Uh, in React, we learn early on to hoist state up to a parent so that if two siblings need it, you put it in the common shared ancestor and pass it down as props. And effectively, that's what we're doing here as well. Um, except the URL lives outside of our React app. We hoist the state up there and then we pass it down, not as props, but using these handy little hooks from Next or whatever uh, framework you're using. So um, it was really easy to spot in this case, but keep an eye out for it in your own apps with things that are external to our app, especially things like the URL or dark and light mode or whether we're online or our GPS location or our language. A lot of these things tend to get um, duplicated in React State and use effects to try to synchronize them, use local storage. Local storage is another one. Really easy to duplicate these. Just wanted to make this video to point out, I was actually working on something just like this in a real app uh, with someone we were reviewing some code and this was the problem. But this is kind of the easiest case to see it. So um, that's, that's why I wanted to make this video today. Uh, keep an eye out for a duplicated source of truth. And if you have any questions about any of this, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, that's it for today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.